I'm often amazed as to how many different ways there are that we can set up examples for which we need to use Newton's laws to solve. Uh, take a look at this. We have a, a mass, a car on wheels. Uh, on top of that, we have a, a pulley. We have a block on top of it. No friction between the block and the, the mass here. And then we have another one attached to a string over the pulley. And you can see that if you let things go, uh, this would accelerate downward, this would accelerate forward. But what they're trying to do here is accelerate the whole contraption forward with enough acceleration so that M2 will not lower, it will stay right in place. And so we want to find out what is required, how much force is required to gain the acceleration to keep M2 from sliding down. At first you look at that and you go, how is that even possible? Because when you look at it, the, uh, the, only, the only thing that's, that's uh, pushing on M2 is the weight. Uh, so M2 is M2G, the weight of M2 is pulling M2 down. And the only thing that can stop it is M1, but since there's no friction between M1 and this block right here, you'd expect this block to accelerate forward. But what happens if you push on this hard enough so that the acceleration of this block equals the acceleration of M1 so that relative to one another, M1 and M3 do not move relative to one another. So whatever acceleration M1 has, M3 will match that. And so if that's the case, M1 will not slide forward relative to M3, which means that M2 will not slide downward because there's no, not enough string to do that with. Wow, that's kind of an interesting uh, example, which means to solve the problem, we first have to figure out what the acceleration of M1 would be, which of course is the same as the acceleration for M2, if this wasn't being pushed. So let's do that first. So we can then see that F net is equal to M total times acceleration. So we're looking at the acceleration like this of M2 and M1. So let's do that here. M1 plus M2, the situation first. Find the acceleration, so A is equal to F net divided by mass total, and in the case of M1 and M2 alone, the net force would simply be M2g, and we divide that by the mass total, which is M1 plus M2, and so we have acceleration is equal to M2, which is 5 kilograms, uh, g is 9.8 meters per second squared, divided by uh, M1, which is also 5 kilograms, so 5 kilograms plus 5 kilograms. So you can see that that's 5 divided by 10, which is 1 half, times 9.8 meters per second square, or the acceleration is equal to 4.9 meters per second square. So that's acceleration both M1 and M2 would have if M3 stayed stationary. But we're going to push against M3 to make it accelerate at the same acceleration as this, which means M1 will not move relative to M3. So what force is required to accelerate the whole system to the right? Well, again, we use F equals MA. F equals MA. So now we're going to use for the whole system. So F required is equal to the total mass, which is M1 plus M2 plus M3, times the acceleration that the whole system would need, equal to this, for M1 and M3 not to move relative to each other. So in this case, this is equal to M1, which is 5 kilograms, M2, which is also 5 kilograms, and M3, which is 20 kilograms, and they should then have an acceleration of 4.9 meters per second squared. All right, that's 30 times 4.9. So 4.9 times 30, and we get 147 newtons. So when the force is equal to 147 newtons, Almost miraculously, M2 will just sit there suspended from the string, not move downward, and one will sit on top of M3, and everything will accelerate to the right at 4.9 meters per second squared. And that's how you do that problem.